What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Two Game Podcast, where we are here to conclude the Rings of Power Season 2 with our breakdown slash review of Episode 8, the season finale. Uh, it's been a long road, guys. I feel like we've been doing uh, been doing this for a while now. Now we get like a little, little breaky break. This is the last... This is the last episode of uh, Lord of the Rings breakdown, deep dive until December when we will hopefully all three of us will go see uh, the War of the Rohirrim together. Hopefully. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for that. But, yeah, guys, if you have not seen anything from this episode on, I would just go ahead and check out this video and then come back. Because uh, we are talking about not only this episode, but the the season at large to kind of give y'all our final thoughts on season two. So without further ado, let's fucking jump into this shit. Creston, let's, let's start off with the positives first, okay? I, I, I want to hit the positives first, right out the gate. Let's, okay. So Nick's I not going to talk. You Nick's, to me for that. Just, hold on, let's just turn <laughs> it off real quick. Nick's not going to talk for like the first 20 minutes, Okay. <laughs> What did you think about the season finale? I'm going to be honest. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And we have Alexa going off in the background, so we're just going to pause that. Alexa, stop. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Alexa, enjoy right, this. Just start over. All right, just start over. <laughs> so, I'm going to be honest. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't have the clapper, so. <laughs> no, I I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Um, I li- I really liked what they what they did with uh with Sauron, you know, expanding on his character and stuff. Um, overall, I uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Had had some uh some some tear jerkers in there as well, man. I'm gonna be honest. You guys might make Ooh. fun of me, but I was choking up a little bit when old Durin fucking yeeted himself onto the Balrog. <laughs> Dude, that shit was fucking tight. Dude, that, that line that he gave Prince Durin right before he did it. He's like, I'll never like... let you win. It was yeah. just you getting stronger. And then turns around and the fucking Balrog's right there. I'm like, he did his best. He did his best. <laughs> uh no dude that intro was fucking it was fucking good I, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with like like you know how the episode it just jumped right into them fucking talking and it just seemed like a little out of place like okay, okay did i did i miss like the first like 10 minutes of this conversation like right. they're, no they're, they up, throw no. you into the mix yeah they don't right want you into up it. but that whole sequence with uh between prince duran and then king duran was just absolutely fantastic him jumping off the cliff that explosion the the axe colliding with the sword was just so fucking dope it had me diamond status for real really great cgi and special effects there as well indeed um and then i love how his his character arc kind of got concluded there with his last act being you know him taking off the ring and then saving his son that was yeah that was uh that was done well literally brought tears to my eyes I can't remember. Did he just drop the ring, or did he chuck it at Prince Durin? Honestly, I don't remember. I just remember them like zooming in, showing that the ring was gone, and right. then uh, him hitting him with the one liner, and then just fucking going right to business. Yeah, but but you know, I will say this: the worst part of about this episode is the fact that it came after episode seven. It was never going to live up to episode seven. Like, let's be yeah. let's be completely honest here. Preston. That's very true. <laughs> no, I, it, it, I I enjoyed this episode, but seven was definitely the best. Six, exactly. Eh, it's kind of a toss up between six and and eight, but seven was my, definitely the best episode of this season for sure. My my, okay, I'll give you the the very opening scene with the Balrog was tight. And I, I agree also, the Sauron at our character arc, the way that finished, I liked, I liked the symmetry of that. With Sauron getting killed at the beginning of the season by Adar, and all of the orcs just 
ganking them and stabbing them and killing them. And then fast forward to episode eight. <clears throat> Adar thinks that the orcs are on his side. And then he just gets ganked by every single orc there. They're all just jabbing him just like they did Sauron in episode one of season two. Oh, and, Glug played it well, man. Yeah, no, yeah, I, and I, I liked it. I liked that. Um, my main issue with this episode, though, was the amount of time given to each story. It, if, if I had to say a complaint, I would probably agree with you. It just seemed like they were trying to close out loops of a lot of different storylines, and I think that hurt it a little bit. But, but, I still liked it overall, man. I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was still a great episode. It was, it was, they were, everything had, because I mean, you're looking at what, nine different storylines going on in one episode and it's an hour long episode. So each, each storyline gets five, six minutes. So it was just, and then a lot of the, a lot of it, like you said, with jumping right into the Balrog and you're like in the middle of the conversation when the episode starts, same thing happens. When the Dark Wizard shows up, just all of a sudden, just who we find out to be Gandalf and the Dark Wizard are just in the middle of a fucking fight. It's like, when the fuck did this happen? When when did we get here? Last we saw Gandalf, he was looking for a fucking stick. Wait, I thought at the end of the other episode was when he was holding the rocks up. Or was that at the beginning of this one? When the Dark Wizard attacked the uh, the stewards? That's in this. Oh, uh, okay. I watched it in that's, two different sections. Like, I watched the yeah, beginning and the end, so. Yeah, the Dark Wizard shows up and goes, I'm your friend. I'm I'm not trying. Like, those guys are the bad guys. I'm your friend. And then he just starts trying to kill everybody. I, I, I can't disagree with your assessment there. It, it did feel like yeah. because they were trying to to hit every single storyline, It some of it got cut short. They They put a lot on the chopping block for this episode to knock out a lot of those storylines. And that would be my, my only complaint or my biggest complaint yeah. of the episode. Now, yeah. that all said, Gandalf and Nori, that's her name, right? Yeah, Nori. They've said their goodbyes. We're not that lucky. Can we be? <laughs> can, Never. can we leave the Harfoots? Okay. So no. My other biggest complaint about the episode, or I, I guess I want to talk about it first. I, I I hold off my judgment because I've been waiting to fucking talk to both of you about this shit, um, especially Creston because I already knew where Nick was gonna stand with it. <laughs> um, Gandalf finally gets revealed. Okay, it's been teased. I like it. We've man. been saying it. <laughs> hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Okay, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I am not I am not upset that it is Gandalf. In fact, I mean it is like the worst kept secret in all of the world at this point that it was going to be Gandalf. Okay. We were trying to tell ourselves that it was not Gandalf because it was that obvious. Like it was almost kind of like the acolyte where it was like things that were happening, like, okay, like they're not gonna be that obvious about it, right? They're gonna kind of hide it a little bit more, and they don't with Gandalf here. My issue is Grand Elf. They've never and seen that's how he, before. And that's how he gets his fucking name. And you you kind of knew where they were going with it, but if you oh, have subtitles right on... Right when they said Grand Elf, I was like, these motherfuckers. Yeah, I, I immediately faced <laughs> them home. I was like, no. I thought I was going to be you more had upset it, about it, but I'm not. You're not? That it's Gandalf? No, 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 no. The How way he got his name. Pain. Which, oh, I mean, which I, I know, I know we're nitpicking here, but I feel like it's just, I feel like it's lazy. And, and yeah. his name initially wasn't Gandalf when he came off the boat. He was Mithrandir, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you're starting him with the wrong name to start with. Let's he just didn't come in. He didn't come in on a boat, which I'm devil's advocate here. Devil's advocate, okay? Gandalf 
probably came to Middle Earth during the First Age. Most likely, because like all of the Maiar and the Valar. Or did, the, did the Valar come to Middle Earth or was it just Maiar? In the First so, Age? In the First Age. I mean, they, they came to uh, overthrow Melkor. Right. But was it, it was, so they all came then. So most likely Gandalf came in the first age. Cool. There's, there's no record of him in Tolkien lore that he was actually on Middle Earth in the second age, but there was also nothing that said, so there was, there was nothing else. There was nothing that said that he wasn't there in the second age. So devil's advocate, this is not rewriting Tolkien. This is just adding to Tolkien. So maybe Gandalf leaves Middle-earth sometime in the Second Age and comes back in the Third Age and comes back as Mithrandir and Gandalf again. And that's when he gets the ring. I like it. I like it. They're, they're definitely Probably taking the, the word adaptation at face value. Yes. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I don't I'm care. Not, I've enjoyed the story that they've told for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. I wish. I, I would have liked it to have been more of an anthology, where like let's let's reuse the same actors, and each season we tell a different story. Like season one, we talk about the Numenor and the fall of Numenor. Season two, we talk about the creation of the ring or whatever and that way it doesn't follow or it follows more of a chronology versus mashing three thousand years worth of history up at all happening at the same exact time yeah no i think that would probably be awesome for people like us but for the casual fans i think that would probably it would be rough to keep them engaged in that well, and Nick is hell bent. Cool. Nick is hell bent on having that uh, Stuart Poppy Nori storyline for one fucking season. No, no, no. <laughs> He's hell bent on it. No, I, 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 think it's, I think it's the timeline thing, right? It's 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 that, but it's also the big my big huge complaint with the first two seasons, and it really shines in this last episode is there are too many fucking storylines going on at one time that we can't give a storyline its due. Right. And if I we, mean, we, I... we need to kill some people off or kill some stories, <laughs> so that way we're down to like four or five storylines and not nine. I have a I, list. Yeah, I, I agree. That's definitely a lot going on at the same time. But at the same time, I kind of enjoyed that aspect because it's the last episode of the season, it's going to be two years. Like we got to at least touch on everybody a little bit. Hey, fucking Isildur still alive? Cool. Arondir still alive? He Please. showed up in three episodes. <laughs> and they're just they're gearing him up. How is Arondir still alive? That motherfucker got stabbed how many times? A bunch. The elves have the rings and shit, though, man. So. Mm. Did they yeah, show Galadriel? Got those healing powers. No, Adar, Adar has fucking Narya, which is Galadriel's ring, which has the healing powers. So how the fuck did Arundel survive all those stab wounds when Adar Gil-Galad has, the has the other ring? Yeah, but Gil-Galad doesn't heal ring. His, his ring doesn't heal, does it? Like like uh, Galadriel's does. I mean, it might. It might. I mean, they might take liberties. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just uh, one mile of vicinity, so all of your fucking wounds don't matter. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> if that was the case, all of the fucking elves that died during that battle should just stand all right the back, fuck back up. Yeah, they're all White Walkers now. Yeah. It's a crossover. I crossover. love the scene, though. Everybody just like, plays. Just like, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the crossover I didn't know I needed. Right. No, I, I like. I definitely I hear the complaints and from Nick, and I, I can see it, and I can somewhat agree with it. Uh, but I also see like Creston's side here, where it's like, yeah, it's gonna be a couple years. Let's touch on all the storylines. Let's catch them up. Was it one hundred percent executed to 
the best that it could be? No. Like, I think we can all agree that it could have been better for sure. But again, I, I, I agree with Creston here where I think we needed to touch on all these characters. Now... Well, that's fine. Give us more than an hour. Make it a two-hour finale. I agree with that, for sure. I agree with that. I think yeah, I, I should have made it longer. That a lot of the um, casual fans don't know what happens in the story. So they need those little reminders like, hey, this shit's still going on over here. Like, also keep this in mind, you know? I get it. It's just an hour to squeeze nine storylines in is not enough time, if that's the case. If they want to... Yeah. They want to have nine storylines, nine plot lines going all at one time. They need to make these episodes a hell of a lot longer, or they need to dedicate episodes to two storylines at a time and give us 10, 12 episodes instead of eight. I'm down with that. Can we, can we talk about, first off, Kelly Brimbor, my boy, taking it to the end there, man, taking all those arrows and... Yeah. You know, he went through the ringer and he took one for the team. Went out like they've a been, man. They've been oh, given, went out like an elf, I guess you could say. They've been giving that Boromir treatment to fucking everybody, huh? <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> but I, I, I just I want to confirm that I loved what they do with Killer Brimbor throughout this entire season and especially over like the last three episodes. Oh yeah. Um he, loved it. Loved it. Him him and him and Sauron or Anatar's interactions were I think executed Peak. perfectly. They painted I mean, over the picture. Yeah, he that that story arc was definitely the most fleshed out and carried the season. Yeah, for sure. So one question that I have. So Adar, let's go back to Adar for a second. Adar just gives up the ring back to Galadriel? And then he's like like, like, first he wants to work with her, and then he tricks her. Then he's like, fuck that bitch. Give me the ring. And then he gives her the ring, and then all of a sudden he likes the orcs again. And it's just like, what the fuck? Did I, did I miss something? So I, I want clarification on his, on his character in this episode. I got nothing. I think so it I am was... right that he, j- he just changes his character multiple times in this episode. Or in this season. Or in, or in this, this season. Whole, this whole season, has, his character's been off. I think he was... So focused on uh, destroying um, Eregion because he knew Sauron was there that he was willing to do it by any means. And then after it happened, he realized he still didn't have fucking Sauron. So then he's like, all right, let's fucking do what it takes. Maybe bring, try to, you know, bring Galadriel back into this, make a little peace offering. And it just happened to be the exact time when, uh, you know, or did he really? Showed that up. the ring that he took from Galadriel would have done nothing to help him defeat Sauron, because the ring uh, he was he was looking pretty fresh while he was wearing it, huh? But he that's was. the whole thing. So all the scars were gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and he noticed it. And like he was like, "This ring is healing me," and maybe maybe the ring healed him mentally to where he was like, "Ah, yeah, that makes sense." That's yeah. a good point. That that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. See, I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna pass judgment on his character until we talked about it because the, that's the, that was the, like the one of the biggest questions that I had for this episode. I was like, wait, wait what the fuck happened? Did I miss something? <laughs> like you just I changed think, your character yeah. all I, of a I sudden. Think, I think the ring gave him clarity and made him realize that what he needed or what he thought he needed the ring for was not what the ring was gonna help him with, and just overall what he wanted the route that he was going was the wrong route to do it. I can fuck with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. I yeah, still, that. knowing that they are going to kill him off at this end of the season, I am very disappointed that uh, old Binge and Stark didn't stick around for one more season just to, just because I liked him so much better as an actor. Mm-hmm. And I liked the way that he portrayed Adar so much more. But, I, I love how this whole season, like we've we've kind of already said that he's he hasn't really like his his relationship with the other orcs has been strained a little bit. Like he doesn't really care much about them as the first season. Right. I love how he gives her the ring back. And then he's like, "Oh, my children, 
And then, like, two seconds later, they fucking join Sauron and gank his ass. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then and then Sauron ganks them, and they're like, oh, fuck, we fucked up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, wait, how about um the um the Sauron versus Galadriel little 1v1 they had where he was, like, shape-shifting while they were fighting and shit? That shit was tight. When he hit that Halbrand, I was like, oh! Yep, it was nice. That's cool, man. Did you, I, I'm curious. Maybe it was just me. Was there something about the choreography there that y'all didn't like? Yes. What was it? I'm, I want to see if it's the same thing that I have a complaint with. I don't know. It was a week ago, but yes, I did not. There was something <laughs> off. <laughs> Guy, right? Yeah, I didn't like it. Why didn't you like it? No, I was, can't remember. There was something off. I know it was a week ago, and I had uh, something next. Right? Yes, yes, I agree with that. <laughs> it sucks for reasons. Okay. <laughs> yes, I will shit on it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Please go into detail so I can agree with you more. You know. You know that fucking uh, Facebook page? Nick is actually all of those people. He has different <laughs> Facebook pages. <laughs> There's fucking burner accounts. <laughs> it To me, it seemed like... Gladra was the issue that I had with it. It seemed like she was going off of like 30% effort there. And then Sauron was actually... Or the actor that played Sauron... He was actually putting forth a lot of effort into like the fight choreography, but I wasn't sure if it was just how the scene was designed to be. Like maybe she wasn't so sure of herself going against him, or maybe he was just so badass that it just looked like she was just I was about to say as good. Maybe it's because that's what they were trying to get at. Yeah. Okay, because if I was comparing that sequence to uh was it season one when she starts training all the people from Numenor and she just wipes the floor with them. Yeah. yeah if it's kind of what I was comparing it to. If, if, if that's the difference that you're noticing, then I'm going to go with that's what they were trying to convey is just, he's so superior that it's like child's play to him. Right. Okay. Literally See, again, effortless looking like now, Neo in the matrix. Now, right now, if memory serves, she did get a piece of him, though, right? She did. The cheek. I mean, she kind of face fucking yeah. instantly. Yeah, uh, but he had that look on his face, like "Whoa, bitch!" Like you. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little dodgeball reference there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, like I said, I, I didn't want to complain on it without. And that's the good thing about these reviews is we can kind of talk about them and, hey, you saw it differently than I see them. And now that y'all have kind of kind of caught me up on it, you know, okay, I'm fine with it. Now, if only Nick could remember what his gripe about it was. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> right. I don't know. Did it, he, he ended up jumping off of a cliff or some shit like that. And she I'm did. Like, okay. yeah. yeah. And then she just landed gracefully on the grass. Did but she, she or did she, like, that point. she landed on her? She landed on her back, didn't she? She was all beaten and broken, and then yeah. her powerful ring healed her, and then she just walked it off. No, uh, Gilgal. No, she fell and off. Elrond the had to join forces to draw the the um, that, darkness out of her because she got yeah, stabbed yeah, yeah, with yeah. the helmet or with the crown. Yeah. I mean, right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. So she fell off the cliff, and then Elrond gave in to the power of the rings, the elf rings. And he was like, you know what? These things ain't half bad. I will uh, think I might want one later on. Old yep. Gilly. <laughs> another <laughs> another, uh, another Matrix reference. What's right. going on? He's starting to believe. <laughs> like slowly putting it on his finger. <laughs> you can't, but we can. <laughs> uh, I well, actually while we're talking about the Matrix, um, old, old, uh, Elrond, his... Um, his little speech, his little monologue in the first oh, Matrix. Oh yeah, they got still one. Of the, still, like I, I put Rivendell. that in. Like I would talk. I would say top ten monologues ever. Maybe top five. What the human race is a disease. Yes, okay. so fucking good. <laughs> I'm like, ah, damn! I relate to this so much. <laughs> uh, one other thing that I want to mention. Did y'all notice Narsil 
the exact yes. same. Not 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 one for one, but it was pretty fucking close right. to how good. Aragorn got it. One for one. It, it looks good. I don't could do a one for one. I, I say not one for one because it was definitely not as good as the Aragorn scene. That's the only reason I say it was it was not one for one. Uh, but he like they did it all dramatic where he uh, yeah pulled the, he unsheaths yeah. it and then Dude, he looks at it. I got chills when she was like, "It's called Narsil," and I was like, "Oh shit, son!" Right? Because you know what? That's something that I never really thought about. Was where where was the one sword or where did the one sword come from? Yeah. It uh it made my pee pee move. And now Mandil has it, so and he has left the main city to go off to find his other son. Yeah, he's in the west with the other uh faithful. In the west of the island of Numenor. Yeah. Yeah. So and he's then... off find, he's off to find him. So that way they can flee Numenor and sail to Middle Earth. By pass right by Sildor as he's sailing back to fucking Numenor. Right. Did wait, did Num- did Isildor get on a boat? I can't remember. He did. He was he trying did. to bring that fucking hood, hood rat chick with him. And let's talk about that scene. He's Jesus the fucking Christ. hood rat bitch shows up. And he was like, "Hey, why don't you come home with me?" And she's like, "But I'm married." He's like, "But do you need to be?" <laughs> And she's straight up. So then, so then, old Crooked Dick shows up from Numenor, and Isildur is like, "Yo, homie, I'm actually alive. Let's take me home." And he goes, "Hey, and I want to take this bitch with me." And she's like, "Yeah, I'll go." And her husband like side eyes her, like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and and then Crooked Dick's like, "Nah, dude, you're not royalty. You're not nothing. You're a prisoner now." And then he sails off with them, and oh boy. Just goes right back to his bitch wife and goes, holds her hand and watches him sail away like nothing fucking happened. Yeah. <laughs> Gather up some rocks, boys. Time for an no old problem. fashioned stoning. <laughs> what a fucking tuck. <laughs> Dude, that, was a, that talk, was a good retelling. <laughs> Kemet? Oh, what's that fucking dude's name? Crooked Dick, you're calling him? Kemet or something? Uh, I, I have the uh, Kimmin. Kimmin? Kimmin? Kimmin. Crooked Steven? Dick's not far off. Crooked Dick is much better. He <laughs> is, uh, he's he's definitely up there on the list now. Like he needs to die. they're trying to create, the, like, portray him as a villain. And guess what? He's on my list. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> I fucking and hate him. He's the son of uh, what's his name? The the uh, the Farazon, the, the yeah. king, maybe king of Numenor. Maybe he has the sap. Oh. What happened? Like, okay, I need clarification on fucking the 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 Squid Queen, whatever her name is now, Miriam. Uh, yeah. So the Squid spits her back out, and oh my god, you were right, yay! And then Farazon's like, nay, no, nope, that much. was a that was a like, fluke. God damn it, that didn't work. Anyways, we're not we're not going with that. Yeah, no, that was. <laughs> We we tried the religious route and it ended yeah. up biting us in the ass. We're just gonna go a whole different route now. And everyone else on the island's like, "Yeah, it's cool, whatever." I'm telling you, man, those are the most wishy washy motherfuckers. She gets spit out there like, "No, Mario, Mario," and then he's like, "Nah, we're gonna we're gonna do something else." And they're like, "Yeah, fuck that bitch. Put her in chains. Get her out of here." We, we, we were just playing around. Get back to the eagle. <laughs> We were, just, we were just playing around. That wasn't for real. <laughs> I just wanted to see if she'd do it, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> but no, that, that Kimmin dude, um, you know, for the fact that he's had what? Not 10 minutes screen of screen time? time? Yeah, like, very far. little screen time. He's capitalized. And he, he is fucking capitalized on the very limited screen time that he's had that I'm just like, I want you to die. <laughs> yeah. Right the fuck now. He's like, been a great villain from the start. Yeah. I'm not I'm not ready to put him in like the Joffrey category or anything like that. As far Remember, as he like was trying all to blow time up the great fucking ships. Wasn't that the guy that was? was trying to blow up the fucking ships? That a was seal that saved? Yeah. That was him, Shit. huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I well I remember him in one of the first episodes when they're in like the brothel and he's like talking to Farazon. 
about how Farazan needs to just take over, like the whole country is ready for him just to rule or whatever else. And Farazan's like, shut your fucking mouth. It's not time right. yet. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. And I didn't, I forgot he was the one that tried to fucking blow up the ships. Yeah. I put him, he's not Joffrey. He's more, uh, like, I mean, just in terms of like, you just fucking hate him. <laughs> like, you want him to die. But the difference is, Joffrey was kind of like a like a more realized character. He's little. And... Oh, that's a good choice, sir. He's a little. Yeah, he's like a, a more aggressive little finger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a more in your face. Shout out to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another shout out. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man. I, I over overall, I thought it was a great episode. I thought it was a great finale. It kind of hits all the high points of the season. Definitely not perfect. And and like I said, the worst thing that ha- could have happened to this episode is that it came after episode seven, which I think was the best Rings of Power episode by far. Yeah, um, I so. and, yeah, and I <sighs> the Balrog scene. I liked it, but it troubles me because the cave collapses and it's like all the dwarves are going. Okay, well that story's over. Like we ain't got to worry about that thing anymore. He's he's in the ground again, and it's like, mm, no, no, motherfucker, he's still there. Every, everybody knows Balrogs can't dig, man. I guess. <laughs> I just like hit him with a couple stones. I would have preferred, yeah, I, I would have preferred it not be the Balrog. I would have like maybe been the Watcher in the Water or some shit like that. And then you know they think they get rid of that, and then they're like, okay, we're cool to mine again. And then it's like, oh shit, no, there's something else here. Instead of revealing the Balrog, he kills Durin the king. And then all I need to do is just not dig anymore, right? Well, I feel like they left it kind of open-ended too. Like, maybe he comes back because Cosmic Doom is going to fall. It hasn't well, fallen. Too. The king right. just That's the point. They And all the dwarves now know that, oh shit, there's something down there we shouldn't dig anymore. So how are they going to dig some more to find it? Well, you remember, uh, I think it was towards the end of the dwarfs scene or whatever, when uh, who's the dig master mm-hmm. was talking to soon to be King Durin, Prince Durin. And he's talking about how the other clans were laying claim to the throne and the, uh, they had already collected gold from them. So they were indebted to him. And then he kind of glances over at the little fucking plate of rings Maybe they're already whispering in his ear. Or maybe, maybe that's he the put ring on that he promised Disa he would Ooh. not put on. Ooh, he's already wearing it. Yeah. Disa nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I, can't let I feel like they left that pretty open ended though. I, I look forward to uh um heading back to Kazat Doom in season three. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm I, just looking forward to season three period. I yeah. I, I would have preferred Durin's Bane to be an entire episode or two episode just to show like as a finale. I Durin feel like Bane it's like or his Kazakh Doom. If they weren't gonna do it this season, they should have done, you know, saved it for next season. Yeah. I feel like they're they're coming to the same conclusions for the most part, but they're just kinda uh expanding and adapting the route to get there. Like I said, they're definitely taking adaptation at face value. Like, and I've enjoyed it. I, I've enjoyed what they've done with the show for sure. So, all right. Like, so we all predicted, or sorry, me and Creston predicted that season two would be the fall of Numenor and Kazakh Doom. And we were obviously wrong. So does that mean season three will show the fall of Numenor and Kazakh Doom? Got to. I mean, we're already setting it up now at this point. I mean, it's got to be Kazat Doom because the Numenor is got to be towards the end. Yeah, Numenor has got to fall next season because the the faithful are leaving. Yeah, so it's time, and they have revealed Durin's bane. He has allegedly killed King Durin, and he's down what? there. With him. Yeah, and they've set up Gilgalad and the elves in a position where they need assistance and Gil Gallat even says that like we can't win with these numbers. So I'm assuming early on season three, 
he's going to send an emissary to Numenor to request aid. And yeah. like, uh, like old Crooked Dick was saying, like, this is no longer a, uh, a village or whatever. This is like a, a soldier outpost or whatever the fuck he said. Mm -hmm. I think Farazhan's going to see that request for aid as an opportunity to expand into Middle Earth. So I think that's probably going to happen early on in season three. Yeah. And then Primo, the uh, the very finale with all the elves standing around near a little river. That is yes. what will what will one day be Rivendell. Yeah. I the saw Valley it. I was like, Imladris. I know that area. I had, I had to confirm with Nick because you hadn't, you hadn't finished the episode yet there, Creston. I didn't want to yep. spoil anything. I was like, I know that area. I know that, that waterfall. Is, <laughs> that is Rivendell, yep. It really isn't thought, that far away from a Region. If you look at it on a map, they're like right next door to yeah. each other. It's just the uh, the hidden valley between uh, the two mountain peaks, the little valley. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm excited for season three too, man. I don't, I I have no knowledge of the source material other than the movies. So fuck, they can do whatever the fuck they want as long as it doesn't include Nori. I got bad news, sir. They said they're gonna. They've extended it for six seasons. The Wait, sixth season possible. is just gonna be Nori. Oh. <laughs> Nori. <laughs> the trail back to wherever the fuck she came from. Yeah, we're, we're gonna see uh, the little ticker across all like all the news. Uh, Nick Ziegler is now an executive producer and has added in a six additional season, <laughs> which so will focus just on so you can kill all of focus them. <laughs> strictly on Nori. <laughs> And then traveling <laughs> with the not Harfoots to meet up with the Harfoots to then go try and find the Shire. And then they all get murdered. The end. No. You know what they're going to do? The, uh, the Harfoots are going to stop at the rivers and they're going to become the future uh, Golem clan. Okay. And the, the non Harfoots are going to keep on traveling, and because they live underground, um, and they are going to find the Shire and start to be hobbits. Are you talking about the Tooks and the uh, Brandy Bucks and all the different yeah. clans of hobbits right there by the river? Well, yeah, because there's like four different clans of hobbits or whatever. Whatever. Yeah, Gollum. Well, Gollum's are um, Smeagol's Smeagol? family was further west or further east. More, more along the lines of where they, where um, fucking Rivendell and shit are, right? I want to say, yes, yeah. So yeah, that's where the Harfoots are going to stop and settle, and they're going to become Smeagol's descendants, and all of the desert dwelling Hobbit folk that live underground or will continue traveling west and find the Shire, and develop Hobbiton. The Baggins. The Baggins, yep. Do y'all think season three is going to um, develop the nine men? They're going to have to. Or they're just going to just throw in some random people and just say, oh, they got nine rings. Well, Crooked Dick, they're kind of setting him up to be one of the uh, the nine, I think. Yeah, for sure. The I think Theo, too. He's kind of He's been on the upswing, but I still remember what yeah. he did in season one. Fuck that yeah, guy. Think Crooked Dick's going to be A1? Why, why they fucking bring Theo back in this episode? I thought I he was know. gone. They, they brought him back just so they can kill him next season. Yeah. <laughs> he served no purpose in this episode. He showed him up. Him and Nori are going to meet, and then they're going to get into a terrible boat accident, and they're both going to die. It's so funny that they have had so many opportunities to write Theo out. Like, they so many times he's like, I'm ready to leave, and other people bring him back into the story, and it's like, guys, guys, I need you to go. On, I need you to go on the same page as us. Right. Okay, <laughs> you're right there. So he's got. If they keep on bringing him back, and he's played no role whatsoever, and he's a human, he's going to carry a ring. Absolutely. You think Crooked Dick's going to be num uh, a one? No, he will not be because he's got no witch powers. The Witch King of Agmar had magical powers before he became. Oh. So we need to find somebody that is a witch king. 
Now that said, maybe Theon or Theo, whatever his fucking name is, is the Witch King because he got the he got the the stabby thingy and he's already been dark sided a little bit. So maybe he develops some magical powers and he becomes the Witch King of Magmar. I fucking hope not. I hope not. I I kind of want them to go now that you mentioned that, like just bring in a brand new character and make him kind of like an overarching. Like the I villain mean, underneath the villain. Yeah, I mean we've killed, we've we've killed off Adar, so now we only have eight storylines. So let's add three more. <laughs> yeah, a clan, will, a clan I, of men. Your where hostility the is there hopeful. is fucking noted. Okay, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker coming at me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm 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 excited for season three, man. It's gonna it's Same. gonna be good. I hope they improve on the things that we said were the issues with this season, which would be the uh, pacing, the pacing, kind of not jumping all over the place, not allowing three episodes to go by before you bring back a storyline. I think that's the biggest issue. If they fix that, like they fixed, I don't know, 100 percent of the issues that we had with season one, series would be fucking golden. Right. Hear me out. Let's fix it for them. All right, we're going to have two half seasons and they can release them a half a year apart or whatever. And that way we get product quicker than two or three years from now. And let's divide the stories in half. Let's only talk about four or five stories for six episodes and let that conclude. And then let's talk about the other four or five stories for the second half of the season. And let that conclude. That way we give more time at once to a storyline. The only issue with that is, and I, I, the only issue with that that I see is what Creston alluded to earlier. You have the, uh, the people that maybe not like big into the books, like me, or other people who are just following along with the series and haven't watched anything with Lord of the Rings. And the timelines are not going to mash up for them. It's going to be kind of like the Witcher series where you don't know what the fuck storyline is going on at any given time. Okay, but but that said, like the Gandalf Nori shit that's going on plays no role in what's going on in this story, in the Numenor and Elves and Sauron story. So far, that's been completely separated. They just cut it completely. So, uh, I was... I'm down with that, but if we're not going to, uh, then it's growing on me. But the Gandalf line, especially now oh, that uh, okay. <laughs> that Bombadil's involved, we got the Dark Wizard. I'm intrigued by it. I, I'll, I'll agree with that. I thought you were. I thought you were saying <laughs> the fucking Harf uh, Nori and all that was like great. I was like, Creston, like, are you pulling a fast no, one sorry. on me here? <laughs> I'm not saying no, it's sorry. not. I'm not saying that it wasn't a good story, but I'm just saying, like, I don't I, don't cut Gandalf. Cut no. Nori for sure. Yeah, cut, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But let's let's find a way to Numenor, Numenor, Rivendell, or whatever, and the Dwarves. That's one consolidated storyline. It's three different stories, but they all intertwine timeline wise. So we can have them be the first half of the season or the second half of the season. And then the other storylines be the opposite of that. And that way you get a more consistent show at once. And you can push out material faster. The other problem with that is, do we trust them to be able to do that effectively? No, because so far they've failed horribly at doing anything effectively in that sense. We got all new uh, writers. I disagree with that. (laughs) They did. Aren't there... Yeah, I think they they're getting new uh, show writers. They got yeah. rid of every single one. one, all but Damn. like one guy, huh? No, when it comes to script and everything like that, they have fired everybody and hired all new. They have kept well, I think they kept the show runners, but they all of the writers they've rehired or they they okay. they fired and redone. The show runners are all the same, but the writers are all different. That's gonna be, be interesting. Tough. I- I forgot all about that. It's got to be tough to come in and pick up where somebody else left off as opposed to starting fresh. 
I'm assuming the show runners will at least have a storyboard. I'm assuming they've been planning this shit out to last five seasons and they have a storyboard of shit to happen per yeah. season. And they're not just doing the Disney sequel approach where they're just making it up on the fly as they go. I was I was wondering if you were gonna bring up the Star Wars sequel trilogy. <laughs> and you didn't disappoint. <laughs> always got always gotta jab that motherfucker when we can. <laughs> So I'm hoping the showrunners at least have a storyboard for five seasons. That the, hmm. the new writers can then go off of. Who knows? It could go Pretty either way. could go either way. I'm excited to see what happens. I yep. can't wait to see this trash fire erupt. <laughs> no. Negative Nancy over here. Hi, man. If you don't go into it with any anticipations, you can't be let down. Yeah, sure. may, maybe you should take your own advice. I was about to say, you went in with a lot of high expectations, sir. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for this show, not after the first season. That's what I'm going with now. I, I did it with the Acolyte. I just went in there blind. I was like, I'm not expecting anything to be good. And I can't be disappointed. The Acolyte is not a good example of that. <laughs> I... I would have preferred a second season just to see if they could have fixed it like they have it that like Amazon has done with Rings of Power, how they have improved. I would have liked to have seen Acolyte get a second chance. Sir, but, you throwing out some heaters out there. And I was gonna say, we, I feel like season one wasn't that bad, sir. Season okay, Acolyte? Acolyte, but I've heard y'all talk about Oh no, he's talking about Rings of Power. Yeah. Oh, so. okay. I was like Preston, my man. <laughs> no, nephew, y'all nephew. told me how dog shit the show is. I'm just saying, I feel like Rings of Power season one was probably a little better than that. It was. It, way no, better. it was. It was definitely better. But nephew, nephew told me today, he goes, Yeah, man, we started the Acolyte. I was like, Why? On purpose? He's like, Yeah, and then my girlfriend was like, wants to watch it. I'm like, dude, do me a favor. Just if you ever take advice from me, just stop now. Dude, he's <laughs> doesn't saying get he better. needs to start Rings of Power. Like, that's the show you need to watch, bud. He told me about Dracula Untold, by the way. Yeah, I gave you uh, I was like, some serious props on that, sir. <laughs> he was like, hey, Creston uh, recommended Dracula Untold. I was like, and I, I, I haven't got around to it yet, or I, I started it and didn't finish it. I'm like, bro, fucking finish that movie. That shit Dude, is underrated. <laughs> right? I told him, I was like, there's not a whole lot of shows that I'm going to tell you go home and watch this shit tonight. I was like, this is one of them. You need to go home and watch that shit tonight. It's that fucking good. It's fucking good. I was, I, I had your back. That was there, a sir. solid call out, sir. <laughs> That's one of your best suggestions yet. <laughs> I have them occasionally. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is going to be it from us. Let us know in the comments below of what you thought about the season finale and the season at large for season two and what you kind of hope to see for season three. Uh, also in the description below, we have all of our links to all of our social media accounts. We would like it and appreciate it if you went there, like, subscribe, follow, do all that bullshit. Really helps us out. Uh, also a link to our Patreon uh, where you can support us monthly, and that will be also very much appreciated. Uh, but other than that, we appreciate y'all joining us for this deep dive breakdown series, and we'll be back in December, guys, for the animated movie. I'm fucking excited for it. Indeed, yeah. but until then, we'll catch y'all next time on another episode. Laters.